Today we're going to make checkerboard cookies. For today's recipe, we're going to use our food processor. You can also do this by hand. First, line your bowl onto the food processor base, lock it into position, plug it in. Then you can add your nice sharp blade, please be careful. To that, we're going to put our flour. We're also going to add a pinch of salt to accentuate the sweetness. Also add your sugar. And then we're going to put the top on. So line it up and then you'll see there's a stem that has to go into the center to lock everything securely into place. Pulse it briefly to mix your ingredients. Then we want to add ice cold butter. So please make sure that you cut your butter and then refrigerate it again temporarily to make sure it's super cold. We're going to use the pulse function to break up the butter into small pieces. And our flour mixture with butter should look like cornmeal. There shouldn't be any great big lumps of butter in there so it should be nice and small but always using the pulse option on your food processor so not to warm the butter and make it into a paste. Now we're going to add our eggs. There's two eggs plus vanilla, so we're gonna add in our first egg. We're gonna pulse it, add in our second egg and pulse. And then we're gonna to continue to pulse so that the dough comes together. You can start to see it collects, it's getting bigger, and now I just run it briefly and you see it now forms a ball in the machine. So now we're going to take it off, we're going to move our base so that we can weigh our dough. Put a bowl on the scale and tear it. Weigh your entire dough mixture. Okay, when you have your total, you want to divide that by two. So what we did here is we hit the tear or the zero button and we removed half of the dough. So it'll show a negative on the scale, so you can also use your scale in that way. Now to half of the mixture, we're gonna add three tablespoons of cocoa powder. This cocoa powder we're gonna mix by hand and we wanna do so very carefully so as not to make a mess. So we'll start with mixing it with a wooden spoon, just breaking it up. We're just looking to incorporate it, so don't knead it or over mix it, but just gently press everything in there. Now you can use your hand to bring it together and you wanna just mix it just until your dough is completely chocolate or brown uh, from the cocoa. Okay, so now when we're done, we'll take it out onto our board and we'll just give it a few folds just to make sure that there's no white streaks in there. So that's a fully chocolate dough. And we'll scrape everything off the board and set aside. So now we have our chocolate dough and we also have our vanilla dough. So I'm just rolling this into a cylinder so that we have two even shapes. You want to work with this pretty quickly because you want everything to stay cold. If it does get warm, put it in the fridge. So now we're going to put some flour on the board, enough to keep it from sticking. We're going to use a rolling pin and roll this nice and even. Notice I keep moving the dough on the board so that it doesn't stick. I'll add more flour if needed. using a plastic bowl scraper just to keep the sides nice and straight. And I'm gonna roll it out. I'm gonna basically roll it out to a desired size. I wanna keep it about a half inch, three eighths to a half inch thick. And I'm going to place this into a quarter sheet pan. So the size of my dough should be an eighth of a sheet pan. So I'll just use that paper as just a template so I know how much further to roll it and then again, Using the plastic bowl scraper, I'll make the sides nice and straight. I'm going to transfer this onto my sheet pan that where I put my parchment paper. And just pick it up and move it. And again, everything should be nice and cool, so if it does get warm at any point, just stop and put it into the fridge. I'm going to repeat the same process again with my chocolate dough. So again, flour on the board, flour on top of the dough. Move pretty quickly. Keep it moving on the board so it doesn't stick at any one spot. Minimal handling, and then you want to, again, straighten the sides. So these two doughs, when combined or put side by side, should fit into a quarter sheet pan. So each piece is about an eighth of the sheet pan. 
Okay, so I'm going to transfer that in there. And then again, using my bowl scraper, I can just straighten up all the sides. We want to have nice straight sides so that we can have nice even cuts for our next step. Now refrigerate. So now we're going to take our dividers. You can also use um, a ruler and a knife. We're going to just mark it into six strips. So I'm just rolling it just to mark it on there. Okay, we'll do the same thing with the chocolate. Nice, six nice even strips. And then we will take a pizza cutter or you can also take a knife as well. If you need to trim the edges to make them nice and straight, just pull your scraps to the side. We'll save that for later. And now carefully run your pizza wheel or you can also use a straight edge knife. Okay, we wanna keep everything nice and cold, so we should be moving pretty quickly with it. In between, anytime you put it into the fridge, um, you wanna leave it in there for approximately 15 minutes just to allow the butter to set up again. If you need to put it in the freezer for a few minutes, um, you can put it in there for five minutes as well. If anything breaks apart, just pinch it together and set it aside. Again, we wanna have nice straight edges, so if you see that you need to trim your edge, just go ahead and do so and then save the scraps. Same thing with the vanilla pieces. And we're gonna get six nice even strips. Staying nice and steady, keeping it nice and straight. Again, trimming the edges if you need a nice straight edge. Saving the scraps. You could just roll the scraps together and make a different shape just for a taster. Alrighty, so now we have 12, six chocolate and six vanilla. And now we're gonna bring them together and start to glue them. So we're gonna keep that extra egg white that we had from when we separated our egg yolk for the recipe. We wanna hold on to that and use that as glue. So for this recipe, we're gonna need two chocolate and two vanilla, I'm sorry, for the shaping. And you're gonna brush it with some egg whites and that will just be your glue and just push them together. Okay, again, brush it, place it on top. You wanna to brush anywhere that the dough needs to stick together with a little bit of the egg whites. Make sure you press firmly, keep its nice shape, and set aside onto the sheet pan. Repeat again. And then I saw we had a little broken piece there, so just when you go to push everything together, um, that egg white will help hold it all together. So if you get a little break in your dough, don't worry about it. Just Pinch it together and it'll be just fine. Okay, you wanna line everything up. Make sure again that you use that egg white as a glue. Nice and even. Put it onto the sheet pan and repeat with our final pieces. If you didn't have a pastry brush, you could also just take a little bit of saran wrap and use that. Um, you would just dip that in some egg white and just use that to brush, or you could just use your hand. Just make sure that if you do that, um, because you're touching raw egg products, you wanna keep your hands nice and clean. All right, so the final one is gonna go onto our sheet pan. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put that sheet pan in the fridge and allow the dough to set up again. So now that it's nice and chilled, we're gonna take a nice sharp knife. We're gonna trim our edges. Oh, we saving again all those scraps. We are going to now evenly slice these logs. So each one you should get about a dozen and a half or 18 slices. Again, keeping all scraps, any broken pieces, you keep it off to the side. You can always re-roll them and just make them into a random shape for a tasting cookie. This one kind of fell apart because uh, the pieces weren't cut so evenly. Sometimes on the end that can happen. So we really want to save the perfect ones and really bake the ones that are nice and glued together. So we're going to arrange them on the pan, making sure we leave space in between so that it can spread what and bake and the air can get around it. So there's our setup pan into the oven. We're going to put it into a 350 degree oven and we're going to bake it until they set and are lightly golden brown. And here is our final product. So just another addition of a nice decorative cookie for your cookie platters this holiday season.